YouTube, what's going on? This is Preacher. So, my air conditioning heater, not the cool part, but the heater part, has stopped working, right? So, I'm over here looking, trying to figure out why in the world the heat stopped working. And while I was just looking at my lines, you know, my little valves, valves opening valves, and just looking at my engine, because I have an older engine, I stumbled across that, right? So you see the discoloration, right? You see the dry part, and all of a sudden you see the dark part, uh, the wet part. And if you look a little bit closer, right there, got a little leak coming out right there. See, one of the things is, when you get an older truck, unless you automatically start re replacing all your lines, which I knew I was gonna have to replace all my hoses and stuff on the truck when I got the truck. So I just started looking at the rest of my hoses. Then I get to my other hose here, where the check valve is. See that, that one right there. And that then got a little bit moist, so it's dry and it's wet too. Especially up at right there. See right there? Then how it's dry, then it goes to be wet. So that just let me know that, okay, I have a leak. Now I replace those where you see all the nice, nice hoses. So you see all that. So I, I replaced those on it. So, you know, I just start looking at stuff. You know, all my other hoses. Now, I already replaced those belts when my uh, fan clutch head went out, but my water pump belt, that one right there, it's right here, can you see? And then it started to rip right there. Okay, so, but I got the belt for that, which I already showed, so I'm gonna replace that belt because I already replaced all the other belts and stuff but yeah so you know when you have an older truck you have to do more than just pre-trip your truck you actually got to really really look at your truck and and look for things look for signs and by you looking at it all the time you know when you finally do come up on something you can tell right away you know what I'm saying? Here at my, um, uh, my direct freight that I got. But yeah, so it's like you have to really, really look. So by me really looking and things like that, you know, I'm just, just looking over, trying to figure out what's going on like with my heat. And I, as soon as I look at the host, I can say, hey, this is different. Because I'm looking at it every single day. You know, when you're looking at it two, three times a day, every time I get a little stop, you know, I try to look at it because I know I have to replace all my hoses. Okay, I know I got to replace all my hoses. But I replace the ones that are very, very obvious. And as time go, you know, I keep trying to just re replace some hoses, replace some hoses, replace some hoses. Till eventually I have all the hoses and all the wires in it replaced. So now, this week, uh, on Friday after I drop my um, load, I um, take my truck to my uh, mechanic and I'm going to have him uh, look at it. Now, if it just was the hoses itself, I would do it. But because it's a little leak coming from there too, okay, that's on the inside. So anything on the inside of the engine, I let my mechanic handle. If it's on the outside and I just got to change a part, you know, be a part changer like some of these shops you go to where they don't want to fix the problem. They should just want to change the part and just throw new parts at a problem. Hopefully that fix it. Uh, that's kind of like what I do. I'm a part changer, okay? So I can change parts. I can take off an old part, put on a new part. I can take off that hose, take it to the hydraulic shop, have them make me another hose, put the hose right back on. That's no problem. I could do that all day. But when the stuff on the inside, I'm like, eh, well, let me make sure because if it's leaking from there, it's a problem where it's leaking from there. So I, I want to get that checked out. 
and make sure that's all right. So when he's checking it out, I just go ahead and have him replace the hoses and uh, put on that water pump belt uh, that I got. But you know, it's and that's a brand new belt. I put that belt on back in November when I first got got the truck. So it's not that long. But here's the belt right here for the uh, water pump. So I have the I have the belt just in case you know if something happens and it, it's squinting a little bit and things like that. But you know, it's still a good belt. But it's it 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 got tore up on the sides when the uh, fan clutch popped and that belt popped with that too. You know, it just looked because it's new and we knew it new. We just not really looking at it, looking at it. And then after I got it and started squealing a little bit and really looked at the belt, I'm like, oh, I got to change that belt. So, so I'm just going to drop the truck off to my mechanic on Friday because I'm going out of town this weekend and, uh, and pick it up Monday before I head out to go get my uh, my load on Monday for next week and have them fix those, change out those two um, hoses and fix that that little leak, um, whatever it is, and change out the hose. But when you have an older truck, especially as an owner op, you know, you got to do preventative maintenance. Why wait till it breaks before you fix it? I, I saw it's a problem and I saw that last night with a flashlight so when i get out in the morning time i'm able to you know really look at it and you can see the the change in the colors between the dry part and the wet part let you know that it's a leak in it some kind of way somewhere it's, it's a it's a leak in it and especially on that fuel line you know you can lose prime on um on your fuel you can start starving your engine of fuel because if it has a leak in it, air is getting all into it and it costs everything not to uh, run right in, improper. You know, and that actually happened this morning. Okay, so um, it only was about, what, 50 something, no, I'm sorry, 35 degrees. It was 35 degrees and I had a hard start. So it's not starting like the fuel is not getting in. So I'm like, okay, so I, 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 now I have to mash on the pedal. So I've been seeing I had to do that the last couple of days. So that's another thing. So when I saw that hose, that's when I start looking at different things. And I go to that hose on the fuel line. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what's causing my heart start. I got air getting up in there, causing the fuel not to flow like it um, will flow. And the return fuel is just going right back down. So I'll actually have to start all over. You got to keep pumping, 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 pumping. And I have to step all the way down on the pedal and go through like two different, two to three different cycles for it to start. Yeah, I know, of course, if I don't want to crank it like that, I could just, you know, shoot it with some ether and things like that. Little, little starting fluid by the, uh, on the, in the air intake, you know, and then it'll start right up. Yeah, I know all that, but I really don't want to do that. That's not really how you want to start up your vehicle every single day. You can start it up in a pinch, but it's a reason why it's not starting. So I'd rather take it to the shop and get it fixed so that way it starts up, you know, properly and everything is working properly, you know. That's one thing you hate. Yeah, I just spent, you know, the 28 in a week, in a week down, but to change out those hoses and that little leak, you looking at probably a hundred dollars in parts if that really probably less than that but about a hundred dollars in parts and give my mechanic like a hundred dollars two hundred dollars to do it three hundred dollars i'm out the door for the belt the uh the two hoses to fix that leak and i'm out the door for 300 bucks you know i mean it's it's it's, it's not a biggie it, it's really not a biggie you know if it wasn't for that leak i'd do it myself but because it's a leak, I want to make sure it's done right. Because it's a reason why it's, it's leaking and things like that. So, But that's all I got going on, man. That's all I got going on. I'm here in Fairmont, North Carolina. About to head down to uh, West Palm Beach. I stayed the night out. Because I deliver in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So, I'll be home tonight. And then I leave out in the uh, morning to deliver this load. But I pick up in the same town 
West Palm Beach that I'm actually delivering this load up and I'm taking that load to Raleigh, North Carolina, which is about 88 miles away from where I'm currently in, am right now in Fairmont because I come back to this place two times a week. So, which is pretty good. Now, I had to fight. I mean, I had to fight, really had to fight for $1.56 a mile for this here load. I really had to fight. $1.56. And they was at a dollar for this load. And I had to fight for a dollar fifty six. Really had to fight for a dollar fifty six. I know some of y'all like a dollar fifty six. Oh, that is crazy. That's Florida rates, is what it is. It's, it's it's Florida rates. That's what it is. It's not crazy. That's what it is in Florida. Like I say, every state, every area have their own particular rates and what they their lane particularly pays. Okay, everybody know the rates coming out of Florida suck. You already know that, so ain't no need to be commenting about crazy and stupid mess like that when you already know the rates suck in Florida. So for me to get better rates, I always got to get loads out of Jacksonville, which I normally do, but because all the loads that was coming out of Jacksonville want you to pick up by 9, 8, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I won't be able to make it up there in time. So I have to go down further down where I'm at so I'll be able to make these pickups on time. Sometimes I can, you know, if it's an open window, I get I can get there and that's fine. But all the loads that was out here today, I mean, all the loads was like eight o'clock to nine o'clock pickup times, 10 o'clock pickup times, and I can't make it up there. So I have to go down loads down south and they know you're trying to get out of there. So that's the race where they go, you, they typically, typically going to pay anywhere between a dollar a mile to a dollar 24 a mile is what they normally pay you know unless you do a short hop sometimes what i do is i would do a short hop i get a load from like jupiter or west palm beach and i take it up to jacksonville or uh daytona port orange alachua uh i take it up somewhere like that Thule. I take it somewhere up there, Jacksonville area, and I get that load for about 400, 450 bucks. Then I get a load from Jacksonville going up to like Charlotte somewhere for like $750. And then I did head from Charlotte up to uh, Fairmont. But in this case, it wasn't like that today. The loads just didn't pay out like that. So I had to take this here little load right here. So. It is what it is kind of thing, man. It is what it is. But I get paid so well on this load where I got right here. It, it is, it's pretty good because this load pays me almost $3 a mile at this. I mean, this load paid me $2.89 a mile is what this load pays going down into Florida. So even though I'm getting $1.56, I'm still is averaging you know, over two dollars and twenty-five, two dollars and thirty-four cents a mile. So sometimes you got to take these little cheaper loads, but when you have another load that pays good, it makes up for the difference in the long haul. Like I say, I'm not trying to fight the day; I'm trying to fight the week. It's what I'm trying to do. I have a certain amount of money I want to make a week, certain amount of minute miles. So this week, I'm going to end up with um, a little bit over fifty-one for this for this week. Um, before I get a Friday local run. So on Friday morning when I deliver the load, I will it, I will have about 5150. And then I pick up another load on Friday morning to go somewhere else for for something. And that 5150, you know, that's off uh 2800 miles. That I made the 5150 uh for this week. But like I said, I get I get a load, a water load from Jupiter, take that down to Miami for another 450 bucks, and that put me up to where I need to be at, which is about 56. But 5,000 is all right. But I could get 56, you know, with 50 with 2,900 miles, and make 5,600 bucks for the week. Which I'm fine with that. Like I said, these Florida rates, I got to say that because all these, you know, analysts, oh, I made $9,000 this week. Yeah, in your area where you're running it, you can do that. You get to the hot area. 
but I don't have that. I'm local. So since I'm local and I do like local freight, things like that, those the freight that I deal with. Those the freight prices in my area that I deal with. My business is set up for that. Until I get my sleeper truck, so that way I can go more up north and go to these areas to make that kind of money. But I'm enjoying my five nights, Saturdays and Sundays off with my family. And I'm still making plenty of money. After everything's said and done, I'm netting over $3,000 a week. Well, take that back because I'm just getting eleven fifty a week. That's how much I pay myself. My business is getting the remainder of that. So my business is actually getting that, you know. That's how that works. My business gets between eighteen to nineteen fifty a week that my business is making after I get paid, after all the bills are said and done. So I'm cool with that. All right, so that's what's going on with me. A little diagnosis of the repairs that I need to do, a little maintenance, nothing big. Nothing to skeet now, it's just I can see that it's moist. And if it start to get moist, that means you have a leak in it. So if you don't dress the leak and know these hoses and stuff is under pressure, it can just get worse in time. So it's something that you need to address. So always as a new owner op, when you have an older truck, you know, be vigilant and be aware. Talk to y'all later.